Hey everybody, this is VE60AC. Today we're going to go over the APRS IS32 configuration. Configuration as an eye gate only. Receive only eye gate. <clears throat> uh, once uh, you get uh, the software downloaded and installed, you're going to get one file. This file right here. Now there's a couple different ways you can get the audio into your computer. One of the ways, which we're going to cover right now, is using the sound modem by UZH or UZ7HO. Uh, I use this one myself. Uh, I also use uh, an actual TNC, the Cantronics Packet Communicator 3 Plus. Uh, for right now, though, we will just focus on the sound modem. I'm not going to go over the configuration and installation of the sound modem right now. Uh, that'll be for a later video. So once, uh, like I said, once you get it uh, downloaded and installed, you can open it up and it's going to have a client configuration window. Let me zoom this in here. So the client configuration, uh, this is where you can put in your, your call sign SID, the passcode for the APRS IS network, some quiet time, the range, filters, a comment, and then your power height gain. Now, for your SID, or for your call sign in SID, there's a few recommendations. Uh, so generally what you're going to put here is uh, your call sign, and then a dash. Now, zero is a primary station. Now, if you're going to use zero, uh, you, most people just leave the dash zero out. Uh, SIDs uh, one through four generic additional station. Uh, it could be for a digi, uh, weather, mobile, etc. They're just gen generic additional stations. Uh, number five, if you're using a mobile phone uh, with the APRS client on your phone, uh, like your iPhone, Android, Blackberries, or D-Star, uh, you, you can put five here. Uh, on my Android, I do have uh, the APRS Droid uh, application installed, and I use a Dash 5. Uh, if you have a handheld, uh, like the uh, the Kenwood uh, D710, I believe it is, uh, you could use Dash 7. If you're using uh, APRS on a boat, uh, you could use Dash 8. Uh, that's the recommended uh, uh, SID for a boat. Uh, general eye gates. Uh, internet gates, eye gates, echo link, wind link, uh, etc. Uh, they recommend uh, using Dash 10. Uh, aircraft, balloon, spacecraft would be dash 11 according to uh, APRS.org recommendations. Uh, generally, weather stations are going to be dash 13. Uh, dash, sorry, dash 12. Uh, DTMF, RFID devices, one way trackers, etc. Uh, would be 12. Uh, 13 weather stations, as, as I just said. 14 uh, truckers or generally full time drivers. And then 15 a generic additional station. Um, th these are just recommendations. Uh, I, I, if you look around the APRS map, uh, APRS.fi, uh, some people follow it, some people don't. It's, it depends on what you're doing. Uh, there's also some letter recommendations, uh, and those letter recommendations are also for D Star. So if you see uh, a call sign like uh, V60AC A, uh, that would be uh, an APRS. Uh, repeater basically uh, so in this configuration uh, this is going to be uh, just a regular eye gate or receive only eye gate so we're going to put dash 10 here uh, you put your passcode in here your quiet time uh, generally leave this at 60 seconds uh, there's really no need to change it um, the range this is actually 50 miles uh, not kilometers, it's miles. Uh, each segment is one tenth of a mile. So 500 would be 50 miles. If you wanted 100 miles, you could put 1,000 here. Generally, uh, I like to leave this blank, or not blank, but I like to leave this at 500. Any additional filters that you want to put, you can put down here in this filter box. The comment section, you can put whatever you want here. Uh, for this particular purpose, I'm just going to leave it just as it is. Power height gain. This tells the APRS network uh, what kind of a station that you have. My particular station, I run 25 watts. 
The antenna is 40 feet above. It's on a 30 foot tower and then on a 10 foot mast. So that'd be 40 feet. And the gain. It's a GP3. So I have 4.5 dB of gain. I like to round it down to, to 4 dB. Your footprint, according to the map, is a little smaller, but it, it doesn't matter. And of course, the GP3 is an, an omnidirectional antenna. When you hit accept, you're going to see the comment change to include the power height gain. There doesn't have to be a space there. The APRS network will identify this and, and, and put the space there automatically. So once we hit accept, you'll see a little progress bar. And it'll load and ding and give you a screen that uh, will say drag and zoom to home and then click transmit. Now I do have another configuration that I use uh, not on this computer but on a second computer that uh, already has my home location set so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this check mark here that way it won't interfere with that so if we zoom in you can, it can be anywhere uh, my particular location is in Red Deer and I'll just zoom that in And where am I here? All right. And I find the home right there. And then click transmit. And you'll see on the side it'll say your call sign dash ten and show a little computer icon. And if you zoom it out, it'll just show you the map of the area. And that's your that's the, the most basic configuration that you can get there's nothing coming in at this point it's just going to receive packets from the internet and then show them on your screen you're not receiving anything at this point uh, from an hour from an rf standpoint or from a radio standpoint now like i said we're going to run with the uh a sound modem so to, to get the sound modem portion into the aprs is software you want to go to configure ports and then you want to select new port when you select new port it will give you a new window and this is where you can select the type of port it is simply kiss kiss these two would be for like a TNC or you can select a particular radio if it's in the list uh, the Kenwood uh, D700 and 710 have APRS built in I do believe these are handheld units uh, but for, for most base station purposes you're going to use one of these three and for our purpose at this moment, we're going to use the AGW selection. And then we're just going to call it uh, Sound Modem. And then click on the Create button. The next window that's going to come up is Port Type. The port type for this is going to be a TCP port. And it's just going to go back into your computer and look for it. So I will blow that up a little bit. So in the configuration of the sound modem uh, generally you're going to use this address this is the loopback address for your own computer it's home for your computer and then port 8000 now this has already been set up in the in the sound modem portion and uh, that's the default configuration for the sound port or for, for the sound modem I should say and then we'll uh, we'll click OK here then it's going to give you another screen. Now this is going to be the configuration screen for uh, the settings of the sound modem in the APRS IS software. Now the big important thing is to remove this check mark IS to RF. This will inhibit any packets from the internet coming in and then being transmitted out to your radio. Now because we're receive only it doesn't matter as much but if you decide later on to make this uh, you know a full digipeating station this is definitely a necessity uh, now when we have transmit enabled here that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to transmit or sorry it will mean it will transmit over the sound modem so we want to remove that check mark we also want to remove the beacon RF to IS we want to leave that check mark in and select our RF baud rate of 1200. This configuration here will be for a receive only. This is not for uh, a TNC, this is just for the sound modem portion. Once we click accept, 
it'll try to connect to the to the sound modem and the, as you can see here it has done so if you want to check to make sure it has if you go to enables and then logging you can select packets or port sound modem this will show you the log of it trying to connect and it says firing new connection back from new connection and in our particular case you can see there's already something here that has come across on the sound modem so we know it's working we know that anything that's going to hit the sound modem is going to be displayed on the screen and as you can see here on the map right here that is that uh, that's VA6 SD-9 uh, moving right now we can zoom into that a little bit now one thing of note if you try to drag around the map that will drag it and move your home location uh, if you want to see something that's on the corner of, of the screen you can't really do it unless you want to move your home location and you can set it back permanently as you see there it just updated and you can see that it, it's actually receiving something now anytime now that is coming through the RF port that's coming through the sound modem and I can show that here that's coming through the sound modem and it's also being put onto the internet through this station the or actually sorry it is not once I click this check mark now it will be so it'll on this side here you'll see the scroller this scroller will also show you any packets that are coming into the coming in from the internet within your filter range which we set as 50 miles not kilometers miles so as you see mockingbird mkg brd which is mockingbird uh, ve6 gc uh, VA6SD, th this one here and this one here are coming in through the internet port, not through your radio port. Now, if you want to show uh, what's what's going on only on the RF port, which is the way I, I prefer it, if you go to Scroller, down at Scroller, you'll see it says Show All. Well, if you put RF only, only thing that's going to be displayed on this scroller is anything that's being received by the radio. Now the radio, or sorry, excuse me, the the scroller will only show what's on the radio, so you won't be using up a lot of uh, bandwidth on the internet, uh, displaying stuff that you're not going to want to see. Uh, myself personally, I, I do run a full pledged Digipeter. Uh, uh, in this area so I, I don't want to see stuff that's coming in from the internet from distances away uh, it's just not what what I want to see on my map your years may differ now as you see uh, this is my normal station transmitting and I it's a different icon Let's zoom it in here this is just showing that it was received by my station that uh, that I've set up here sorry so this is the iGate setup and running. Uh, very basic. There, everything is default, and this will work. This will absolutely work in any, uh, pretty much any environment, as long as you can get a connection to that sound modem, and that sound modem can see your radio and get the audio from your radio. It'll just receive the packets and then transmit out onto the internet. Uh, you can. There's a few configuration options you can change. You go to the Genius button here this button right here genius uh, you can set up your beacon time out to the internet uh, default value is 30 minutes uh, myself personally I like 15 minutes uh, it's it's personal personal preference uh, everything else can be left as default really uh, you're not going to use any of this stuff if you're just an eye gate and then you can uh, hit accept and accept again and now you'll see that the up here in the corner uh, top left corner it'll show time and then it's counting down from 15 minutes if you hit transmit it'll transmit back out to the APRS IS network and it'll just restart your beacon and that's that's all you have to do to set up for your APRS IS set uh, in the next video uh, I'll go over some more advanced configuration with the APRS IS 32 uh, software uh, getting the digipeter, getting the transmission or transmitting part working, uh, getting the digipeter, and uh, I'll also go over connecting this to a TNC, 
the TNC we'll be using in the next video will be a packet communicator um, uh, by Cantronics, uh, the 3 Plus. I do also have a 9612, uh, but in the next video we're going to be using the uh, Cantronics uh, uh, KPC 3 Plus. It's a pretty popular one for the uh, the APRS network. Uh, it, it has its issues, don't get me wrong, uh, and we'll go over those issues. Uh, in the next video but uh, for now we'll say goodbye 73 from ve6 dac and everyone have a wonderful day mm -hmm.